First Kings chapter 22. And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah down south, came down to the king of Israel, that would be Ahab, and the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth and Gilead, it's one of the cities of refuge, is ours, and we be still, we're not doing nothing, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. Now look at chapter 20, verse 34. What happened to this plea that you had? And Ben-Hadad said unto him, The cities which my father took from thy father, I will restore. Well, evidently he didn't, because here's Ramoth the Gilead. It's still in the Syrian hands. And he said to Jehoshaphat, Will thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art. My people as thy people. True, they're all Jews, they're all of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But Ahab is wicked. Ahab is vile. My horses as thy horses. So we're going to have a unity together. I'll help you. Let's go get the property. Let's go get the land. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. So Jehoshaphat, okay, I'll go with you, but a wise move and a wise gesture. Let's ask God to see what he says. Let's inquire of God to, to make sure that it would be approved. And the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, is Jehovah God. Judah is right right now with Jehoshaphat. Ahab's not so right. And we'll see now. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men. These are the prophets of Jezebel. These are the prophets of Baal. These are the prophets of the golden calves. And said unto them, Shall I go up against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? What do I do? And they said, Go up for the Lord, capital L, O-R-D. Big difference from Jehoshaphat asking capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. For the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital... You're not going to fool Jehoshaphat. He's like, they ain't the prophets of God. Let's get somebody here of God, will we? I'm not going to go with this Jezebel mess. I'm not going to go with this false God mess. If I'm going to help you, I want God. Besides, that we may inquire of him. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah. It's funny how they didn't mention Elijah. Remember Elijah, he said, you're an enemy to me. Then he got right, he repented, and God said, listen, I'm going to pass it on to your son. But he says, there's one man. I thought Elijah said there was nobody left. There's one man known by the king, Micaiah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. But I hate him. <laughs> Now we know where Ahab's standing again. He's got his 400 prophets of gods. Here's this one man of God, and I hate him. Elijah, you're my enemy. For he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. He's not a positive preacher. He doesn't preach about love. He doesn't say how good I am. He doesn't say how well things are going. He does quite opposite. This guy preaches hell. This guy preaches there's one way to God. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. Shut up, king. <laughs> if you hate him, I want him here right now. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, 
Hasten. That's the first time that word shows up. Hasten. He wants to get that property. He wants to go into war. Hither Micaiah the son of Imla. I bet you said that with an attitude. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne. Here's the alliance. Jehoshaphat, who's right with the Lord, does not need to have a throne in Israel, where they got all kinds of false worship. They got 400 prophets of gods, and Jehoshaphat has set up a throne in the wrong territory. It says, on his throne. The king of Judah sat each on his throne. So Jehoshaphat, even though he's right with God, he has pulled alliance with a king that's not right, with a nation that's not living right. Having put on their robes in a void place, nowhere important, a cubbyhole, in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. So in this void of the city of Samaria, which is, has nothing to do with God, since the foundation of Ahab and Jezebel, here Jehoshaphat has sent up his throne here. A void place. And all the prophets, the 400 of them, prophesied before them. They did this, yeah, king, you're so wonderful, you're so great, you're going to do so good, ah, blah, 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 blah. If you just send in, you know, the number across the screen, this 1-800 number, you spend $10 and we'll throw the prayer request in the garbage, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, prophesies to tell the future. And Zedekiah, the son of Chenaniah, made him horns of iron. Now, you've seen these horns. They hang up on walls. But they're not iron. They're made of bones or whatever deer antlers are made of or whatever cow horns are made of, you know, profound in Texas. Things haven't changed. But he's taking iron. He made horns of iron. Iron is not a good thing in the Bible. Iron brings judgment, condemnation. It's nothing good ever associated with iron in the Bible. And he said, Thus saith the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Now why is he saying that now? What happened to the big L, little O, little R, little D? See, he's a man pleaser. He has come to know that Jehoshaphat wants God Jehovah, so now all of a sudden, I'm a prophet of Jehovah. He's a liar. Because what he's going to say is not what God has said. So he has become a lying false prophet. And by the end of what this study is, we're going to look into a lot of verses about liars and lying. And notice here with the ministry, it's a prophet. It's a prophet of a fallen God. It's a prophet of gods that are not God. And he says, thus saith the Lord. There are plenty of people throughout the world today, television, radio, pulpits, whatever, they'll get up with something and say, God save the Lord. You're lying. And we're going to see that in a moment. Let's save the Lord. So he's carrying on Jehovah. He's trying to please Jehoshaphat. Trying to make Jeho Jehoshaphat pleased with him, happy with him. With these, the iron horn, shalt thou push the Assyrians. Until thou hast consumed them. Now, really, you're going to think about these iron horns are going to scatter the whole nation of Syria? Only God has done that in chapter 20. Twice. God has, has broken the bonds of Syria as they lost, and the king takes off. Now, I'm going to use iron horns. And all the prophets prophesied so. So they get on the bandwagon with Zedekiah. Yay! We can have a cable ministry too. Go up to Rim and Gilead and prosper. Now is that not the word of ministries today with liars behind the pulpits? When you've got somebody on the radio behind a pulpit, on television, and they're a woman. And the Bible says the woman's not to assert the authority over the man, and they preach prosperity and wonder and healing and signs and give us money and take care of us, and we need fuel for the jets. Prosper! That is a thing of false prophets. Now today, 
And every week when I preach about the, the Bible, if you're to believe on Jesus Christ, you're going to get a new body. You're going to have a sinless body. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more tears. And I specifically stress that that is going to be in the eternity. And I would stress the fact is, if you're to believe Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's not going to solve your problems today. It may cause more. I will not preach. I will not tell. If you do something for good for God, God will multiply the increase. He may. He may not. Prosper is a mark of a false prophet. For the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. Victory. And the messenger that was, that was going to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Now watch this. Behold, now the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. One unity. They're lying to the king. It's so great. It's so wonderful. The denomination all preach the same thing, Micaiah. They're together. We know you're not together with those prophets. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them. Micaiah, you preach what they preach. And you ask my family, when I preach the gospel, people will come up to me. That's not what Jesus would do. You don't preach enough love. Why? Because that's what their idiot preachers preach. I want you to be like all the preachers. We don't want to be convinced of sin. We don't want to hear about hell. We want the glorious greatness of God. Fooey. And speak that which is good. Don't give us no... Don't you dare go up to that king and give him negative preaching. Don't you dare. And Micaiah said, as the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, liveth. That's an oath. That's an oath Micaiah's making by God. What the Lord saith unto me, that I will speak. Inspiration. Inspiration, I am going to speak by God. I am going to say what God tells me to speak. The Bible says, preach the gospel. Jesus Christ suffered and died, was buried according to the scriptures, and was rose again three days and three nights according to the scriptures. So he came to the king. And the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it unto the hand of the king. Now look at I'll go along with it. That's the message you want. That's what you want to hear. That's what the guy came and told me. That's the message you want. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure, that's the first time that shows up, adjure thee, that thou tellest me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord. Now look, now look at King Hahad. This guy comes up. He does exactly what the messenger tells him to do. He gives the king exactly what the message he wants. And King Ahab has said, that's not the truth. That's not how it is. That's not your preaching. And, if, and the fact is, I know for a thing, if I were to go after four years preaching at the farmer's market, if I were to give in to the people and give them the kind of message they want, they would look at me and say, that's not you. That's not who you are. And he said, Micaiah, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as a sheep that has no shepherd. That no shepherd would be, Ahab, you're not doing nothing. You're not doing right. Those prophets are not taking care of the people. And the Lord said, these have no master. They got a king. But Jezebel took over one instant. They have a king. God put the king in his hands, the enemy, Ben-Hadad. And he sends him off with a little kiss and a little friendship and peace. Let them return every man to his home in peace. Everybody go home. The battle's over. Go home. Don't even go to war. Don't follow Ahab. That's what he's telling them. 
And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? So that message that, hey, there's no shepherd. There's no leadership. There's no master. That was aimed at Ahab, and he took it well. That's me. I don't like that preacher. I don't like what you said. Everybody go home. You're not going to win the battle at Ramah Gilead. Oh, I want to go fight. God said, don't. And he said, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. Micaiah is through speaking. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. John saw that. Ezekiel saw that. Isaiah saw that. And all the hosts of heaven, the angels, standing by him on his right hand and on his left hand. All right, so here's another minute picture of what heaven's going to be. When we get to heaven, we're going to see the throne of God. And all around that throne, there are angels. Now, one third of those angels, according to Revelation, are going to be cast out. Those are following Satan. But right now, what we see, there's a throne in heaven right now. At the right hand, we know is the Lord Jesus Christ. And around Jesus, around God, are the angels. And the Lord said, now this is important, this is what we're going to pick up tonight. Who shall persuade Ahab? Persuades the first time it shows up. Who's going to make? Who's going to force? Who's going to instruct Ahab? That he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. Now take that word fall and remember that in the back of your mind somewhere. And one said on this manner, and another said on this manner. There are people in heaven right now, they're talking to God. They're talking to each other. God wants Ahab to fall. He's asked, who's going to make Ahab fall? And they're like, Wow, is that what God really wants? What's God going to do? There's conversation in heaven amongst the angels. The angels just don't play harps on clouds. They're worshiping God. And there came forth a spirit. That's important. You can't see a spirit. That's important. And stood before the Lord. That's important. And said, I will persuade him. Now look at I will do it. Now that gives you the character of who we're already looking at. He walks up to God and says, I'll do it. That gives you a clue who we're going to look at today. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, the Spirit, I will go. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Now, I'm going to remind him. Let's see, Isaiah 7. Write that down. I will. It's important. You can see that to now. I will go forth. I'll leave your presence, God. That's important. And I will be a lying spirit. That's important. That's our subject tonight. Huh? Oh, we're going to do more. In the mouth of all his prophets. Now, do you know a prophet? Do you know a preacher or a pastor or a preacher or an evangelist? Do you know somebody in the ministry who lies? We're going to look at that person tonight. And we're going to look at the foundation of that. He says, I will go be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. That's verse 6 to 10. It's already happened. My case has come, hey, you, you know what happened when you were started talking in verse 6 and you started prophesying 7 and 8 and 9 while Joe Hasselfat says, go get, get me. And he's got to come up with these. You know what's going on when he comes up with the iron horn? You know what's happening? God in heaven has had a spirit come up to him and say, I am going to use those men to lie to Ahab. We take it a little journey back into the back into the past to what has happened in this verse. And he said, God said, Thou shalt persuade him, 
and prevail also. Well, look, God, look what God just did. Go lie to him. Go forth and do so. Now, therefore, behold the Lord, Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. God will use this spirit we're going to look at to lie to you if that's what you want. Why are there so many churches out there? Why are there so many religions? Because that's what you want. Of course, if we stop right now, First Kings 22, that's exactly what you want. If you want to lie that all your good works will, will do you good, God will send that spirit to you. If you want to believe that, you know, a woman will get you into heaven, you want to believe you can have multiple wives, you want to believe that you can go about your sin and God be happy, and you want to shut up that one preacher who preaches the truth, God will send that spirit. There it is. There's the be careful when somebody starts speaking the name of the Lord and it's a lie, and people start following them. To read. Why are they following them? Because they want that lie, according to scriptures. Now, Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Verse 6. We're not going to read it all. we got a few scriptures about this. It'll go hopefully slow enough that you can write them down because it's important. Because this stuff has happened in 2018 at the recording of this, this, this ministry. Now there was a day when the sons of God, there's the angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, notice God is talking to Satan. Whence cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. Have you ever seen Satan walking? Oh, is there something that you can't see a being walking? Oh, it's spirit to me. So they go about, they're carrying around conversation back and forth about Job. Look at verse 12. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Right, go ahead and lie to him. Not Job. We'll be read about Ahab. Go ahead and lie to him. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. Satan has his hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. That's what that lying spirit did. God gave that spirit, go ahead and lie to Ahab. Satan, go ahead. Destroy Job's substance, but don't touch Job. Chapter 2, verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God, there's the angels, came to present themselves before the Lord Jehovah. And Satan came, here he is again. And God is talking to Satan, verse 2, and Satan is talking to God. You know, people don't realize when you get to heaven, when if we were to die before the rapture, before Revelation 12, Satan is in heaven today. We're going to see Satan walk up to the throne, and we may hear him mention our loved one's name. You know, did you see what he did? Job chapter 1 and 2. So again, you know, they're having this talk about Job, and you made me do all this. In verse 6, and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he's in thy hand. Go ahead, go lie to his prophets. Go have his prophets lie to Ahab, but save his life. So went Satan from from the presence of the Lord. It looks like as soon as God gives Satan a little bit of permission, maybe with restrictions, Satan, boing! And he goes. That's interesting. But there's more to be interesting. John 8, 44. And there's anything you get, get this one tonight. All the verses we look at. John 8, 44. And John 8, 44 is spoken by Jesus Christ. Where do lies come from? You ever ask yourself? When somebody lies, 
What spirit is that? John 8, 44. Ye of your father. We got Father Sutherland, Father Smith, Father. Uh, 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 uh. Didn't we see some places as we study through the Old Testament? Didn't we see a young man get called father? The Bible says, call no man your father. And if you call your your religious leader father, that is defying the scripture. That's a lie. And when they gave excuse not to be, you know, well, father, it's a title and all that. And they go again. That's a lie. You are of your father, the devil. Oh, that's Satan. Satan and the devil are one. The lust of your father, you will do. Ooh, lay on that in the Catholic Church today with the lust. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he, the devil, speaketh a lie, he, the devil, speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So what happens to Satan, the liar? Liar, liar, your pants are on heavenly clouds of New Jerusalem. No, it's on fire. Why fire? Isn't that interesting? So the father of all lies, is the devil so that spirit that came up to god and said i will use a lie job one and two that spirit was satan and jesus said it was so so when you tell a lie you are after your father the devil first john 4 1 First John four one. You gotta be careful with lies. White lies, little lies, Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, they're all lies. They're all lies. Beloved. That's written to me. I'm a beloved of God, I'm beloved of the disciples and the apostles. They love me because we love Jesus. Believe not every spirit. Ooh. But try the spirits. There are good spirits and there are evil spirits. There's even a Christmas spirit. <gasps> you know what Christmas spirit is? It's all a lie. Three wise men showed up with three with the shepherd men. When they saw a star and the bells ringing at midnight. According to the carol. Silent night, a woman about to give birth to a baby with no morphine or no such medic medication that they have today and not even able to put her to sleep. Don't think it was a silent night. Whether they are of God. So there are spirits of God. Because many false prophets. Oh, who was that? Are going out into the world. By who? By God. First Kings 22. Because that's what they want. They want a church that will make them feel good. And when that preacher comes up and preaches the truth, I don't like him. I hate what that guy says. And today God sent us a spirit. A man came up as Jesus Christ, smoked his cigarette, and came back as God with a bad right eye. Oh. You're talking to the wrong person. I can go scripture with scripture. I didn't catch on right. I thought he was coming up mocking, you know, to believe on Christ. But hereby know ye the spirit of God. Now that's the good spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is God of God. Every spirit that confesses not. That Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. You know how many spirits out there say that Jesus Christ is not God? Jesus Christ was not here for our sins. Do you know that Jesus Christ, oh, he was as a teacher? Do you know that Jesus Christ wasn't the way, the truth? Have you ever heard of those spirits? This is that spirit of 
Antichrist. Ooh, imagine a religion being put up with the Antichrist before the tribulation. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, that even now already it is in the work, the Antichrist. But there are the Antichrists out there. Ephesians 6, 10. My wife's verse, life verses. Ephesians 6, 10. I'm not going to get into it all, but why do we have armor? Why do I not carry a Colt 45 and a shotgun? Why do I put the breastplate on? Why do I carry the sword, the word of God? Ephesians 6, 10. You know what Satan's got men believing today? Oh, if I carry a, a, a gun gun, bang, 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 bang. And they've taken their holy armor and put it in the closet. Finally, my brethren, 610 Ephesians. Finally, my brethren, that's me. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Oh, there he is again. There's a liar. There he is. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Bang, 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 bang. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There's that spirit. We've got a battle with things we can't see. Ahab never saw that that spirit come into his prophets. We don't ever see Satan inside of us when we tell those lies. And when you've got a false preacher, a false prophet, false somebody, we don't see the horns. What do you do? You break out the sword of the spirit and say, hey, what you're saying is not right. That's not conformed to the Bible. It's a lie. It's a false prophet. You are in great error. You are not standing for God. You, there, there's only one other thing you can stand for in those lies. Satan, the devil, the liar, the luster, the murderer. You know what's killed more churches? Lies. 2 Corinthians 11.14 2 Corinthians 11, 14. People don't like this preaching. Including Christians. Verse 13. Watch this. Watch verse 13. Ready? Which are false apostles. Apostles are not apostles. There are people today that will tell you they are apostles of God. By Peter, James, John, and you name the twelve of them. By the powers passed on, passed on, passed on. There are no apostles today. And that's not into a study tonight. Deceitful workers. Deceit is another strong word for lying. They work with lies. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Look at me. I am a minister of God. I stand for God. God has spoken to me. God has put into my ear this little electronic device that I can hear the people in the sound room. And no marvel. Don't you marvel over this. For Satan, there he is. There he is. There he is again. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Can you physically grab light? No. You can see it. But you can't hold it. So Hebrews 1 7. I hope, hope I wrote that right. Hebrews 1 7. Good, that's it. I got messy handwriting, forgive me. So an angel of light. Now you can see light, you can feel light. And of the angels he saith. 
who maketh his angels, what's the word? Spirit. We just read in Corinthians that Satan is a spirit. I mean, angel. We just read in Hebrews, angels are spirits. There was a spirit that walked up to God and said, I will lie to Ahaz's prophets. We have saw who the liar is. We have saw Job 1 and 2, that Satan stands before God. Who is the foundation of a religion? Satan. Hey God, those people, they want a pope, they want false images, they want to worship angels, they want anything but you. Alright, go ahead and do it. But then here's the limitation. You say, why do women get involved in Muslimism as bad as Muslimism is to women? Because they want to. As much as I preach week after week after week after week, they will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They will not take his free gift because they don't want it. Luke 10. Luke chapter 10. Now, we can run all the gospel references, but we're not going to. I found this one the best. Luke 10, 17 and 18. And there are many. There may be a better one than this one. But Luke 10, 17 and 18. Oh, this is not the one. This is not the one. Luke 10, 17 and 18. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils, those are devils working under the devil. That's why you never, never call them demons. Satan is never referenced as a demon. He's a devil. What are devils? They are workers under Satan, under the devil. And like I say, we could run Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all the devil possessions. All those devil possessions that you read in the Gospels, and uh, yeah, there's some in the, in the book of Acts. That woman who has the, the spirit of divination crying out the Gospel message of Jesus. That's all the work of Satan. That's all the spiritualness of Satan working. Devils are subject unto, uh, subject unto us through thy name. And he said, I beheld, there he is again, Satan, Satan as lightning. Don't you dare go grab a lightning. You're going to get burned. Now, remember I told you that word we read? Fall. There it is. God said, hey, I want Ahab to fall. There's not one person in heaven with knows of the meaning of the word fall. Lucifer. He fell from heaven. He became the Satan. He became the devil. And in Revelation chapter 12, he's going to be kicked out of heaven. He's going to fall out of heaven. If there's anybody that ears that plucked up, he has hands. He can hear God speak. If there's anybody in heaven that were, I want Ahab to fall. Ah, that's me. I got the greatest idea. What are you going to do? I'm going to go in my character. Oh, so you're going to go and lie. That's me, Lord. You know that. Look how all these references are referencing back to those false prophets. You know what happens if you fall, follow false prophets, false preachers, false ministries? You're going to fall just as much as Satan fell. And the answers that you will get from Jesus is, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. You're not washed. You have not been clean. Depart from me that work in iniquity, work in iniquity, I never knew you. Isaiah 8.19, and this is off track, but it's true. In that spirit world, Isaiah 8.19. This is where you got to be dangerous. I mean, it's, this is a, this is an exit, but it's still a good exit. Isaiah 8, 19. And when they shall say unto you, 
Seek unto them that have familiar spirits. Oh, that's an interesting word. And unto wizards that peep, that mutter. So, in that spirit realm of the Holy Spirit, in that spirit realm of Satan, there are people out there who congregate, who reach out and contact spirits that are not of God. You get That's why you keep away from them. That's why you keep away from the wizards. Because they got the spirit of Satan. And so when you got a Christian magician doing tricks, which means you are lying, deceiving the people with hocus pocus and fooling the eyeballs, that's a realm of Satan too. Right there. Check every ma magic word, magic phrase from Genesis to Revelation, and it's never in any good condemnation. Titus 1 2. Now we'll look at who, a couple verses here, who we are not talking about. Titus 1 2. And there's like five or six of these. But we're going to look at three. I think three would be good enough. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Titus 1 2. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie. Now, how's that? When you got a man or a woman who has lied to you in the name of God or any gods, that's not God. God cannot and will not ever lie. Hebrews chapter 6. People got to get this. Because this is real. Hebrews 6, 18. Now this is more strong than Titus. God cannot lie. Now the context was about my eternal salvation. But Hebrews 6, 18. Now this is strong against opposite of John 8, 44. By, that by two immutable things that which it was impossible for God to lie. Now I said that God sent forth that lying spirit. That lying spirit was not God. It was Satan. God cannot and will not lie. Numbers 23, 19. Numbers 23, 19. And if you're in any public ministry, I don't care what it is, if you are serving the Lord, trying to get the gospel out, you have met many, 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 many people who have gone to Broadway, have gone the ways of the lies of Satan, and will aggravate you, and they'll harass you, and they'll do anything. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man. That he should lie. And I was at just three great strong verses. It is not God that will lie to you. John 8 44 told you by the mouth of Jesus Christ who the liar is. Now God may send a lying spirit to you. But it's not God. You are capable of repenting. You are Listen, there are people that come out of religion that get saved, and they do right, and they serve the Lord, and they lead those lives. Now, Isaiah 7, I believe, Isaiah 7, uh, no, is it Isaiah 14, maybe? This one I don't have marked. This is where Lucifer speaks. I thought it was seven. Yeah, Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14, 2. Or 12, excuse me. Now watch as we read from 1 Kings 12. 
Deuteronomy 22, 1 Kings 22, and Isaiah 14, 12. Ready? How art thou fallen? Oh, oh. Now, I didn't look up this verse. I didn't even know where it was. Isaiah 7, I said. Look how, see that word fallen? How art thou fallen from heaven? O Lucifer. There, there he is. That's him. Son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground? Which did weaken the nation. For thou hast said in thy heart. Now here's what he said. I will ascend to the heaven. I will ascend into the heaven. That sounds familiar. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit among the, the mountain of congregation. The size of the, I will. Look at the pride. I will Ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. I had a number here. I don't see it right now. Oh, where is it? I had somewhere here. I mean, I will. I, 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 I. There are five I wills. Five is the number of death in the Bible. Be careful someone that speaks much. I will. I. Me. Look how great I am. Look how well. Look at my ministry. Look at my ministry. It has my name. Look at the ministry all about me. I, 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 I. That's the root of Satan. Lies are the root of Satan. Get back to Kings 22. First Kings 22. We'll end with verse 23. Now therefore behold the Lord has put a lying spirit. The Lord has put. It's not the Lord. Into the mouth of all these thy prophets. God is not a man that he should lie. We have been warned by the scriptures that there will be men and women out there. That when they speak in the name of the Lord. As these men had done. They may be lying to you. And you only have one defense. You only have one plea. And you only have one way to check them out. Do what they say. Conform to the Bible. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Now you know how first of all you can get somebody on that. If their Bible does not say the verse I just quoted. Number one. You got a lying Bible. But we need to know that Satan's out there working. We can't see him. We need to know that Satan goes up to God. Satan and God have a conversation back and forth. God will allow Satan to do many things. He may put restrictions. And one of them things is go lie to those people. That's what they want. I don't know what you think about that. I don't know how you feel about that. But that's... I don't know how to say it. God will give you what you want. Even if it's wrong. And God in his holiness. In his righteousness. He will stand at your judgment. And be right. And you'll be the workers of iniquity. And when God sends people out to you. That preach the gospel. That give you a gospel track. That come to your door. However the gospel gets delivered to you. And if you continue. We deal with a woman today. It was church. It was church. It was church. It was church. Me, it's the blood of Jesus, it's the testimony of Jesus, it is Jesus that say, Church, church, church. You're in a lie. God sent to reprove that lie by sending you the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. So, God will send you the lie, but God will also send you the way of salvation. And your choice to choose, which, to choose what you want. But there's God and there's a devil out there. Both working. They both have spirits. One's all truth. And one is all lies.